Welcome back ladies and gentlemen on this fabulous Friday for another YouTube video all in crypto here and today we are going to be reporting on some pretty significant news and we're going to be explaining why it is significant and actually quite bullish for Bitcoin. We actually have two pieces of news, uh, one involving uh, Goldman Sachs, Citi and some of the other major banks out there involving Bitcoin and of course we have news involving Genesis. Now let's give a little bit of a backstory to who Genesis are. So Genesis were a part of the DCG group and they went bankrupt during the bear market. They had a kind of spillover in regards to what took place with FTX. Now, Genesis can be attributed to the majority of outflows that we've seen with Grayscale's spot Bitcoin ETF. Genesis were a large holder of GBTC before it was an ETF as a trust. And they obviously went bankrupt. Part of that bankruptcy and the kind of bankruptcy process was to recuperate funds for customers and creditors. Now they have done that through selling what is now GBTC as a spot ETF, having carried their GBTC when it was a trust over to it being um, an ETF and are largely attributed to a lot of the sell pressure that we've seen in regards to outflows through Grayscale's Bitcoin product. Now, the news that I have for you today is that they have allegedly actually finished selling their $2.1 billion worth of Grayscale Bitcoin ETF holdings that they, of course, acquired when it was a trust. Now, this is significant for anybody that stays up to date with the ETF uh, flows. Grayscale have largely been very negative or largely been um, an outflow as a result of the likes of Genesis, probably being the biggest player in regards to outflows that we've seen. And this is huge news. So it reads, Justin, Genesis has finished selling $1.2 billion of Bitcoin or of its Grayscale Bitcoin ETF holding, according to Arkham. Um, so this is really interesting and I think the more interesting thing here is actually what we're going to show you in regards to other news that we have involving Citadel, Goldman Sachs, UBS and Citigroup now stepping in to the uh, Bitcoin ETF game, likely to get a piece of the action. Now, why would they be doing this? It's very timely that Grayscale have run out of their, uh, or not Grayscale, sorry, Grayscale definitely haven't run out of their Bitcoin, but um, Genesis running out of their actual uh, grayscale Bitcoin holdings. You know, they've kind of sold it all now. Uh, and this has been an ongoing sell pressure. It largely hasn't affected the market that much. Um, but it, there, we've always said there was good and bad news with what we saw with the grayscale outflows and, and, and Genesis being a big actor in that. In regards to the fact that, yes, they're selling. That's the bad news. The good news is they're going to run out. And that day is today, ladies and gentlemen. So a bit of a backstory. Obviously, we know uh, that DCG I think Genesis was Genesis Trading. It was an arm of them. We know there was a spillover in regards to the Winklevoss twins. Uh, some of the first people to actually apply for a Bitcoin product, I think back in 2011. Um, but the interesting thing is that Genesis obviously were caught up in the whole FTX thing. They had a lot of uh, GBTC. They've been dumping that as part of a sort of bankruptcy. We've seen constant articles on it. This was one from DL News. Bitcoin's biggest risk, JP Morgan warns as Genesis dumps one6 billion dollars in Grayscale's ETFs. Again, they have now run out of Bitcoin. And the really interesting crossover, we're going to talk about the Bitcoin chart in just a second, uh, is the fact that this is from Eric Balanchunas, somebody who I've used really to stay up to date along with the likes of uh, Crypto Slate, obviously CoinShares' uh, report um, as it relates to a Bitcoin ETF and, and, and the kind of inflows and outflows we've seen. But Eric Balanchunas uh, tweets, just in BlackRock updated its Bitcoin ETF uh, prospectus with many new authorized participants, including first timers, Citadel, Goldman Sachs, UBS, and Citigroup, some of the biggest banks institutions in the world. A takeaway here from him is big time firms now want a piece of the action and or now are okay with being publicly associated with this. So two pieces of really bullish news as they affect um, Bitcoin and very timely in regards to Genesis now running out of their Bitcoin holdings. And I believe, what are we, 16 days away from the halvening where you are going to see the new supply of Bitcoin, even the supply that's currently being released is getting well and truly eaten up by the ETFs, but that's about to get halved 
in regards to the halvening. And please save the comments about am I saying halvening right or not? I'm sure, you've got better things to do with your time. Um, but this is really interesting. And you can see this is obviously from Bloomberg Terminal. Uh, and of course, it's showing um, the actual news as it's being reported. Uh, he goes on to say, here's the current list of ETFs and their APs. Up until now, City, GS, which stands for Goldman Sachs, UBS, and Citadel were not named in any of these EFTF filings. Uh, so they either knew or they were ashamed before to be ID'd, um, but now are cool. Either way, likely a result of the ETFs, mega flows and success. Bitcoin, I mean, Bitcoin's just been such a success and it, it's been right. You know, if you look at why Bitcoin was created back in 2008 by Satoshi Nakamoto, whoever he, she, they, or whatever CIA branch or whoever it was that created this, um, if you look at why it was created, it was created to, to kind of hedge or to provide a lifeboat from the failing, what was very apparent in 2008, or the starts of the failing and, and, and fiat systems. Uh, and it's been nothing short of unbelievably successful. And in regards to just the ETF success, it took gold two years to get to $10 billion in one ETF. It took Bitcoin two months. And it's the fastest growing ETF ever. And of course, institutions are going to be wailing in. And I wanted to come out and bring this news on a day, perhaps a rainy day as it relates to the cryptocurrency space, because it always amazes me, certainly when I see in the comments, just how emotional and um, un, perhaps warrantingly emotional people are on days when the market is pulling back. Not every day is sunshine, okay? Some days it's rainy and part of an uptrend is the pullbacks, which you hope are a lesser apart as the... Um, uh, actual upward moves themselves. So what I want to do now is kind of go over really huge news. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section and actually just dive into the Bitcoin chart. So we are I think it's something like 18 days away from the halvening. And if you look at what Bitcoin did last time it got to all time highs, it stalled. And today we are very much doing the same thing. But you guys that follow me regularly will know that we have a broader thesis on Bitcoin. We have been giving uh, a real good technical roadmap that's been followed from when we were, you know, you guys will know that we got back into Bitcoin at 15, 16K. Yes, more into altcoins. We had to eat a lot of volatility as a result of that. But my, um, I'm all about who has the last laugh. And I think many altcoins will actually outperform Bitcoin in the longer term. That being said, Bitcoin dominance, it's a, tr it's, it, it's a, a trade that I should have made more of, certainly getting back into Bitcoin down here. Uh, but you can see we had this small head and shoulders. Target for that was met. It's where we consolidated. There was a little wind up here that kind of completed this, this right shoulder in what is a broader pattern. And we think Bitcoin's going to 151,000. Yes, you're having a pullback, but you're having a pullback where you're kind of supposed to be having one, you know, around all time highs. What is resistance? There's a lot of, and we cover it in our daily market updates, uh, uncertainty in regards to the month of April and the kind of forward guidance of the Fed. And we see oil ticking up and that's boosting the dollar and that's leaning on risk. Uh, but Bitcoin's not just in a kind of pullback zone or, or an area where you'd expect it to consolidate um, for uh, against the US dollar. It's also in one against the SPY, the NASDAQ, and of course, gold, which is having a very good day, um, all likely on the back end of uh, what's coming. Uh, we don't want to go into too much of what the Treasury were um, or are now doing with their bond buybacks. And obviously, we've said we were bullish on TLT and everyone said, oh, you're mad. We haven't been bullish on TLT, which is the 20 year dated Treasuries. During the downtrend, we only recently got bullish. We're not in this ding dong buy bonds where diamonds camp. Um, but that's really all I got for you guys. Just a little bit of bullish news and a nice way to kind of close Friday off. We'll see what comes. Um, on the short term, I'm not overly bearish on Bitcoin. I'm really not. I think this could squeeze and square up and, and, and see that broader continuation. Certainly, we've got a technical pattern that it's in that we expect it to continue. Uh, and it's just kind of going sideways at the moment on the kind of macro adjusting given rates and the probabilities of them and you know oil going up although nat gas and things like wheat and stuff not doing too uh, well still down um you know it's just uncertainty that markets don't like that that's, that's their biggest kind of enemy is uncertainty we want even if it's up or down or the trends up or down you know the certainty of that and the continuation of that is is markets enjoy that they don't enjoy when ooh, are we aren't we you know so on and so forth um but yeah all i've got for you guys absolutely huge news in regards to um, Genesis, one of the biggest contributors to the outflows that we've seen in Grayscale running out of Bitcoin. And of course, actually now the likes of Goldman Sachs, Citigroup, Citadel, 
And of course, UBS now stepping in and kind of um, becoming more of an active part of the Bitcoin spot ETFs. Uh, and there's lots of other ETF products that have actually uh, now come out, in uh, including 2x Bitcoin uh, long and short spot ETFs. All I've got for you guys, I'm wishing you all a fantastic Friday and I look forward to seeing you all in the next one. Thanks all for watching. See you in the next.